to close out the month of the Hijjah, the final month of the Islamic year, I want to highlight one of the most impactful characteristics of, from the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, a characteristic that is often overlooked and underemphasized from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So normally when we talk about him, what comes to mind, especially in this season, is sacrifice. What comes to mind is the submission and the devotion and the obedience of Ibrahim alayhi salam. What comes to mind is his courage in the face of death and, and tyranny, right? And also his cleverness and how intelligent he was with his da'wah. But the characteristic that I would like to draw our attention to today is his high regard for truth his high regard for the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he actually described Ibrahim by this characteristic in the Quran when he said, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ibrahim, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا nabiyya." He says, and recall in the scriptures, Ibrahim alayhi salam, certainly he was Siddiq, a man of truth, nabiyya, a prophet. And a Siddiq is not only one who affirms the truth by way of their tongue. But they also affirm the truth in their actions and they ultimately prove themselves in the face of trial and tribulation to be true to their faith and loyal to their creator. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ That by way of trial and tribulation, he is going to make it known who is truthful and he is going to make it known who is not truthful. And so this characteristic, we find it to be a motivating factor in everything that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he does throughout the course of his life. That it was not sacrifice just for the sake of sacrifice, but it was sacrifice for the sake of truth. It was not submission just for the sake of submission, but it was submission for the sake of truth. It was not courage for the sake of glory, for the sake of praise. But these characteristics, they were all manifested because of his high regard for the truth. And so when Ibrahim salam, he looks around into his society and he questions the idolatry and he rejects these type of beliefs and he questions the worship of celestial bodies and the concept of the divinity of kings, that kings can be divine, all of this, he addressed it because he could not accept anything except for the truth. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, he humbles himself and he tries to make the, the da'wah to his father. And he tries to make the da'wah to his people. Right? All of this is because of his high regard for the truth. And he loves his father. His father to him is very dear. And he values him. But his value for the truth, it surpasses even his love for his father. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam, he destroys the idols, as many of us, we should know this story. And we should have been revisited, especially during this month, right? When he destroys the idols and as a result, he is cast into the fire. This is one of the highest manifestations of this particular quality. Because in the Quran, Yahdi Lati Aqwam, the examples that Allah Ta'ala gives us in his book, they are of the highest virtue. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam, as a young person, he is given a choice. He has the choice between fire and the choice between falsehood. Either you accept, you embrace falsehood, or you're going to have to taste the fire. This is the ultimatum that is put before him. And fire, as we know, it is of the most severe forms of torment. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he forbade the human being for using fire as a form of torture or punishment or execution. Yet this is the choice that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he has right in front of him. Right? But to him, the agony of living was fa with falsehood was worse than the agony of dying upon truth. Right? And so he chose fire over falsehood. 
And when Ibrahim السلام, he goes into to the court of one of the rulers of the time, Namrut. And Namrut, he puts forward a display right in front of Ibrahim السلام, perhaps to try to intimidate him. And he is trying to say that he has the ability to give life and the ability to cause death. And so he brings two men into his court right in front of Ibrahim السلام, and one of them he allows to live while the other he orders their execution. Now if we put ourselves in the shoes of Ibrahim for a moment, witnessing this before our eyes, perhaps we may begin to feel a little threatened. We may begin to fear for our life. We may be begin to reconsider what am I going to say next because perhaps what I say now could be the difference between my life and my death right the average individual may change their disposition in that moment but Ibrahim alayhi salam he has one thing in mind the establishment of truth honoring the truth he's not even thinking about his own safety and in that moment, and he continues to challenge this individual of high authority until the truth was established. Until Namrud found himself down, dumbfounded and unable to respond to Ibrahim. Salam. So he risked his life to establish the truth. And just a few verses later, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the same chapter where we find this incident with Nimrod or Namrut, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked his Lord, Arini kayfa tuhyil mawta, show me how you give life to the dead. And obviously these two incidents, they're very connected, right? But this is not a request out of a lack of faith. As Allah Ta'ala said to him, qala awalam tu'man, do you not believe? Is there some type of deficiency in your iman? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who a'lam, he already knows. But he's saying this so that we can understand. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam, he responded, Of course, I believe. No, this is not a sign of my deficiency in faith, but so that my heart could be entirely satisfied. There was this yearning in Ibrahim alayhi salam, not to just affirm the reality, but to witness the reality with his own eyes. He wanted to see and encounter the truth at the highest level. And we know that Ibrahim السلام, he also had the dream that he would sacrifice his son. And we know that the dreams of the prophets, they are true. The dreams of the prophets, they are a form of revelation. And so upholding this characteristic, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had no choice, right? No instinct other than to go forward and implement the truth that he had seen, right? And so he goes to his son and he prepares himself to actually fulfill the dream until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervenes and he says, Qad You have made this dream true. You have honored the truth. And you have shown that you have a value system. And it's important that we instill this value system in our young as well. That the truth comes before everything else. It, becomes, it comes before our family ties. Our father, it becomes before our own lives. This is how high did Ibrahim alayhi salam, he regard the truth. And in fact, the motivation behind his migration. Why he left behind that civilization that had all of the resources, that had their people, that had everything that was familiar. And he goes into the unseen. He goes into the unknown. So when we talk about the rebuilding and the reconstruction of the Kaaba, or the raising of the foundation, we're actually talking about the re-establishment of a center of truth. As the entire world at that time, it was covered in darkness, and it was covered in falsehood. And so this was the perfect place because Ibrahim salam, he could start from scratch, and he could establish a civilization upon truth 
from the very first brick that was laid. And this was actually his supplication. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنَ وَجْنُبَنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ When he called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make this land of Mecca a place that is safe and secure. First and foremost, because without safety and security, then how will the truth perpetuate in that land? How can we guarantee to preserve truth if there's no safety or security? And then secondly, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him and to prevent him and his offspring forever falling into the worship of idols. All of that because he wanted Mecca to be a center of truth, free of all falsehood, free of idolatry. And then this characteristic, his regard for the truth, it did not die when he died. It did not stop at the end of his life in the life of this world. Rather, this characteristic is of his greatest concerns in the life to come. That on the day of judgment, after all of the sacrifice, after all of the courage, after all of the righteousness and the goodness and the generosity that he produced in his life, he's still going to be concerned about a few statements that he made of half-truth. This is his concern on the day of judgment. Even though if you were to examine those statements, you would find that the true intent of a lie is to, is to cause someone to believe something false. But the intent of the half-truths of Ibrahim salam, was to actually get people to believe something true. And so when he says, I am sick, when he says that the big idol destroyed the rest, it is not to get them to accept something that is false. It is rather to get them to accept something that is true and to actually let go of the falsehood that they were upon. Right? So this actually goes against the essence of a true lie. And when Ibrahim salam said that Sarah is my sister, when in reality she was his wife, Obviously, there's an element of what they call tawriya, which is double meaning, right? Meaning that there was the intent that perhaps she was his sister in faith, right? But at the same time, he did not say this to preserve his own life. He already willingly went into the court of the king and put his life on the line. He already was catapulted into the fire and put his life on. So he's not concerned about preserving his own life. He's concerned about preserving truth. And this is why he told his wife that we are the only two believing people in the land or in the earth by some interpretations. Meaning that if he dies, then perhaps the progeny of faith will end there and then. That there will be no continuation of truth. And so he set aside himself in that moment in order to preserve the truth. And so even with this, Ibrahim salam comes on the day of judgment. And the people, they go to Adam salam, And then they go to Nuh salam, And they continue to send them forward until they reach Ibrahim salam, And they come to him, Anta Nabiullah, you are the prophet of Allah. And you are Khaliluhu fil ard. And you are his dear friend from the earth. So make intercession for us with your Lord. And just before Ibrahim salam is about to speak, he remembers those half-truths that he says. And he halts in that moment. And he can only be concerned about himself. This is the motivating characteristic behind the actions this is the element that made Ibrahim salam the person and the prophet that he was. And inshallah, after the break, a few takeaway lessons as we close out the year with the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina min kulli dhanb fa astaghfiru innahu huwa tawabur rahim
Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. So if we notice, first and foremost, how much goodness can emanate from a single point, from one characteristic, one point of focus, we see that courage was inspired, and sacrifice was inspired, and supplication, dua, so many dua from Ibrahim salam we have preserved in the Quran. Da'wah was inspired from that single point of just having that true regard for the, the truth. And it is the same characteristic that earned Ibrahim salam the title of Imam. Inni ja'iluka linnasi imama, we're going to make you for the people an imam. And it is the same characteristic that earned him the title of Ummah, a nation of one. And Khalil rahman the close friend of the most merciful. And it is the same characteristic that brought about many miracles in the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this first and foremost is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's value of the truth. How much does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself value the truth that he intervened directly on behalf of Ibrahim alayhi salam in so many different situations. That the fire, it did not burn. And the knife, it did not cut his son Ismail. And when the king reached to try to uh, uh, molest the wife of Ibrahim, Sarah, he caused the hand of the king to become paralyzed. All of this on the path of truth. And sometimes because Islam offers so much goodness and so many opportunities to earn the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can become distracted. Where do I start? How do I rectify my state? Where do I begin in building my Islamic personality? Sometimes it's better just to identify one defining characteristic. Perhaps that characteristic it will be the reason for the rectification of yourself and your family and also the ummah at large. And perhaps this is the reason why Jannah that has eight different gates, each of those gates are specific. They're not just general, but this gate is for those who master fasting and that gate is for those who master prayer and so forth and so on. Right, to highlight the importance of mastery, taking one thing and making that your life mission. Right, and we see this in Ibrahim alayhi salam. And subhanallah, the one who embodies this characteristic of siddiq, of truthfulness, the one who is a siddiq, a man of truth, then perhaps they will be allowed to enter into Jannah from any of the eight gates that they choose. And this was the, the hope of the Prophet والسلام, for his dearest companion, Abu Bakr as Siddiq. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of his truthfulness and because of his sacrifice and everything that he did in his life, he hoped that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow him to enter Jannah, to choose whichever gate you would like to. And of the benefits and the rewards of this characteristic is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can preserve it in your lineage to reward you. And He did this for Ibrahim alayhi salam, and this is why we find the very same characteristic in his son Ismail. <inaudible> he was true to his promise. And then a few generations later, Yusuf alayhi salam, ayyuhas siddiq, Allah ta'ala, he calls him in the Qur'an by the same characteristic of being a man of truth. And then finally, until it reached our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, as-sadiq al-ameen, the one who is truthful and trustworthy. And so if we want to pass on the baton of virtue and we want to see in the next generation that same characteristic, we first have to embody it for ourselves. And finally, the rank of the Siddiq is such a rank that it can even surpass the rank of the martyrs. Right, so we find that not only in the Qur'an when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions 
the, the Siddiqeen, he always mentions them before the Shuhada, before the martyrs. But then we also have the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, when he goes to the mountain of Uhud and he is standing on the mountain of Uhud with his companion Abu Bakr as Siddiq and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and also uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the mountain of Uhud begins to shake beneath their feet and this is recorded in Bukhari. And the Prophet والسلام, he commands the mountain to O oh, Uhud be still. Be firm because standing upon you, there is a prophet, meaning himself, and there is a Siddiq, meaning Abu Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala an, and there's two martyrs, meaning Umar and Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Right, so this quality of siq, it is very, very important. And it is time for us, as we approach a new Islamic year, that we renew our commitment to the truth. Especially in these times where the truth is being distorted at the highest level, right? If you go into the university, the academic standard now is atheism and agnosticism. And if you go to the lowest levels of academia, into the elementary schools, now they are pushing the pride agenda where there's no such thing as only dhakr and untha, male and female. And so even at the lowest level of elementary, the truth is being distorted. And if it is not going to be the Muslims who pick up the banner of truth and shine the banner, shine the light of Siddiq into this earth as it is covered in darkness as it was during the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who lived during the time of Lut, and he lived during the time of personalities like Namrut, who were distorting the truth. If we don't pick up the banner, then who will? And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost make each and every one of us a person of Siddiq. Say Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this characteristic to be carried on through our lineage and by the next generation. And may we manifest so much goodness in this life and reap the highest of rewards in the next life because we uphold this characteristic of a siddiq.